My name is uh, Ron Elmlinger, E-L-M-L-I-N-G-E-R, and uh, we are in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today is June 28th, 2013, and I am here with J.P. Moore. Mr. Moore, would you please say and spell your full name? James Philip Moore, Jr. And uh, it's M-O-O-R-E, I'm N -O -O -E. sure. Yes. Double and uh, when were you born, Mr. Moore? New Orleans, Louisiana. Wow. And uh, what was the date? What was your birth date? March the 13th, 1916. Oh, wow. That's great. Um, we would just like to ask you some questions. Um, I'm here uh, representing Cold War Patriots. I'm the National Outreach Coordinator for Cold War Patriots. And I'm here representing the Atomic Heritage Foundation. Uh, it is a group that uh, is dedicated to documenting the history of Manhattan Project veterans, uh, which you definitely are one. Yes. And so we're excited to have you here, JP. Um, so are you ready to answer some questions for us? I will try my best. All right. Um, how did you first become involved with the Manhattan Project? Well, I work for a U.S. vanadium company at Yervan, Colorado, and they uh, were building a plant in Grand Junction and wanted me to go and be chief chemist while they were working on it, and uh, they were building it for the Manhattan Project. Wow. So you were the chief chemist? And I was chief chemist. For wow. Uh, so what was special about your background or your ability or education that made you a uh, good candidate for working for the Manhattan Project? That's been a puzzle of my life. <laughs> I uh, do not have a degree in chemistry. Wow. I taught myself. Wow. I went to the libraries and got books of my own and made friends with wonderful people and I taught myself how to analyze over 90 elements. And it's amazing that uh, so many college graduates would come and did not know how to analyze. They knew the elements, but they didn't know how to analyze them. It's wow. kind of surprising. Well, uh, if possible, I don't know if you know this, but uh, can you explain why the uh, Special Engineering Detachment uh, or the Manhattan Project Detachment recruited you? Do you know how they picked you? <clears throat> no, I'm not certain uh, why. Uh, the, I can't think right now. Okay. <clears throat> uh, for some reason, they set themselves up in Grand Junction as the Manhattan Atomic Bomb Project. Yeah. And uh, they needed somebody here who had a chemistry background, which I don't think they knew that when they asked me to come and be chief chemist. Wow, that is so neat. Uh, so uh, what was your initial job on the project? What, what did on, they have you do first? On my initial job, uh -huh. uh, I organized and ran a chemical laboratory and uh, analyzed samples that were brought in from a wide variety of areas while they were looking for uranium. Wow. Uh, a lot of times that people don't realize that it was not uranium that was explosive, it was plutonium. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know it either for a while, but uh, I finally realized that. Well, when you first started uh, at the AEC facility, uh, did they tell you really uh, what your role was, what, what, what part you were playing in the Manhattan Project? No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so they even kept yeah. it secret from, from, from you. They were for a long time. Did they ever tell you that uh, the purpose of the project was to build an atomic bomb? No, they didn't. They uh, made sure that we all kept our mouths shut and didn't say anything, but they wouldn't tell us why. Wow. Uh, the only time that I knew was when the second bomb went off in Japan and they told me about it. So they had never told you anything about any of the work that was going on in other parts of the country? No. Wow. Uh, did you know much about any other work that was going on at your facility, the AEC facility? 
Did you have full access to all of the projects that were going on there? Well, yes, I did, yeah. but I don't remember all of them. <clears throat> they were a busy bunch. I guess then they didn't tell you anything about the goals of the Manhattan Project or any of their specific operations then, did they? No, they did not. You know, I think in the military, I think they call that uh, compartmentalization, compartmentizing, you know, not telling the guy next to you what you're doing. Well, we were actually working for the Army. We had an Army supervisor here, uh, General um, Leahy, who was, and he was in charge of the project. Wow. And everything had to go through him. Now, even though they didn't officially uh, tell you about the Manhattan Project, was there any of your friends or co-workers that thought they knew what was going on and talked to you about it, or everybody kind of kept their mouth shut? They all knew something was going, was happening, but they didn't know what. They'd ask me, and I'd just say, I don't know. Wow. Um, so... When you were working, I guess, basically, you knew you were working on top secret projects. Yeah. How did that affect the day-to-day -day operations there? Um, I think that would be very interesting, working in something that secret. No, I just uh, did my daily work, and I walked to work, and uh, <clears throat> I lived fairly close to the Manhattan area, and... Uh, I just didn't talk to anybody. Wow. Uh, did you have any role in uh, intelligence or security uh, out there at the site? No. They had a series of guards that were guarding, guarding it. And they caught a Japanese woman make, taking samples one time. And uh, she was uh, had a child with her. And uh, she was roaming up and down the river taking samples. Wow. And uh, they picked her up, and I never heard another thing about her. And she was a Japanese woman? She was a Japanese woman, and she was a, considered a spy. Wow. Were, uh, did you uh, have uh, discharge any material into the river? I mean, would she have been able well, to pick anything we up we were the on river? the Gunnison River, and there's obviously uh, water and uh, discharges, so it probably contained... Uh, some of the elements we were working with. Wow. Well, did this secrecy ever interfere with your ability to do your work? No. You talked about the Japanese woman you said with her child. Yeah. But uh, did they find out ever at a later date that any of your co-workers had also uh, been spies? No. No. Okay. And um, were you ever approached by anyone to uh, reveal information or tell them anything that you weren't supposed to tell them? No, there was a approach. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good thing. What were some of the most serious challenges that uh, you and your colleagues faced out there? Well, really, I didn't consider it a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I just did my job and worked eight hours and sometimes 16 and uh, walked home and slept a while and went back to work again. Wow. So you, uh, you were pretty, uh, you were pretty uh, good at analyzing elements and substances and things of that nature. So uh, you knew what you were doing, didn't you? Yes. Uh, I did the uranium analysis. Okay. And the vanadium analysis, but the rest of them were sent out to uh, other places they could analyze. Okay, so you analyzed uranium and vanadium. Um, uh, and calcium maybe, and some of the arsenics and things. But, uh, now, I think uh, uh, your nurse Jane told me that you had said something about polonium. You also did some work with polonium. Uh, I did not know about polonium until it has come up here recently, really. Oh, really? They had nobody said anything about that. Wow. Because I guess polonium is an alternate material uh, that you can use instead of uranium, right? Well, uranium is not explosive. Okay. But uh, polonium is highly explosive. Wow. And that's what they were buying the uranium for because it contained about 7 tenths of 1% uh, polonium, 
which the, our uh, products were shipped back east, and they did the separation. Now, where uh, did your product go uh, to be separated? Was it uh, to one of the gaseous diffusion plants, or was it? Yes. Okay, so it would Oak have Ridge, been... Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Oh, it went to Oak Ridge to K-25. Yeah, some went to Hanford, okay. Washington. Now, they Hanford was uh, plutonium breeder reactors, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is a funny question. How hard did you work? <laughs> As hard as was necessary to get the job done. Uh. <laughs> I mainly was my biggest problem was managing people. <laughs> oh, how many people did you have to manage? Oh, over a period of time, over forty. Wow. I had uh, see uh, that was during the war years, and the husbands all went to war, and we hired women, and uh, how I taught them how to analyze and use the girls for our analytical crew. Uh, what kind of work schedule did you have? You said you worked eight to 16 hours a day. Was it uh, during the day or whenever they needed you? Or? Well, it was during the day. And uh, if, uh, if if we had a call out, well, we'd work at night. Did you say a call out? Well, I say call out. They ask you to work on some special program and you had to do it uh, extra. Okay. Did you have a phone uh, that they would uh, literally call you and say, you know, hey, JP, we need you to come in. Uh, we've got some extra work to do sort of thing. Well, I, I lived in a home with my wife and uh, we had a telephone. Okay. And you say you live pretty close to the facility, huh? And often my wife was wondering what the heck was I doing going out at night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something about wives and trust in you, you know, but... Uh, during that time, that you know, that's interesting. So, uh, I, I presume she basically believed that you were going to work, right? That's right. <laughs> and sad to say, she passed away in January. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry yeah. to hear that. That was this January? Yeah, this I'm, January. I'm sorry. Well, uh, the next question is, what did you and your colleagues do in your spare time for entertainment? I'm a golfer. Are you? I played lots of golf and uh, I caddied on a golf course and uh, in general I like to fish. I have a lot of nice fish pictures. A fish caught up in uh, Miramani Lake. Uh, mostly trout? Trout, all only trout. All trout. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're pretty good golfer? Well, the lowest I ever shot was 68 on 18 holes. That's pretty good. So, wow, uh, you, that's like being a pro golfer almost. I used to play par golf. Wow. Wow. Now, I'm really impressed with that. That's terrific. I had to give it up because I got to swinging and nearly fall down. So I just <laughs> <laughs> had to give it up. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be a good reason to have to give it up. Um, how often were you able to leave? Uh, did you, were you ever able to take vacations or anything, or did they keep you working all the time? No, we had, we had vacation schedules, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, we, I went on them maybe two weeks, three weeks. Huh. Uh, the longer you work, the more vacation you are entitled to. Okay, so you got up to two or three weeks vacation? Well, I got up to six weeks. Wow. One wow. time. Wow. And I never took the six weeks at once. Yeah. I'd split it up. How old were you when you started there at the AEC facility? Do you remember? About 26. 26 years old? Yeah. And then how many years did you work there? I don't remember how many. Yeah. A lot, quite a few. Oh, quite a five, few. Five years or more. Okay. Uh, what'd you do after, uh, after you worked there? Oh my goodness. Besides playing <laughs> golf? I played golf and... Uh, <laughs> My memory kind of fades on some of okay. it, but uh, uh, I don't remember right now. Okay. Well, um, you said you lived close to the facility. Uh, was it a house that you owned, a rental house? Did they provide the house for you? <clears throat> it was a rental house on down on along the Gunnison River. Okay. And uh, uh, was it a big house, small house? How many bedrooms? It's have? just a two-bedroom home uh, okay. uh, owned by somebody, and I'd rented it, and it was right along the river, so 
it was I could go out and fish, and I caught bass. Oh, okay. A bass in the river there, huh? Yeah. Wow, I didn't bass know that. In the okay. river. A lot of people don't know it, but there is. Oh, I I I love uh, I love eating bass myself, actually. Uh, did you, uh, you said you were married, uh, did you have any children back then? Yes, we had, uh, two girls and one boy. I have one lady here, uh -huh. Jeannie, and, uh, I've got ten grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Ten grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Are, uh, a lot of them here in the area that you're able to see them? No, they're... They're in the Denver area, in the West Coast, East Coast, they're all over. <laughs> Besides golf and fishing, uh, how about your social life? Uh, what did your, you and your wife do for fun? Dancing. Dancing. We square danced, we round danced, we ballroom danced, we did every dance. Wow. Were you in the Masons back then? Yes. Uh, was that part of the social scene for you? Well, this may be interesting to you. I did not know how to dance when I met <laughs> my wife, and she told me I never would bury a man that wouldn't dance. Well, you I, must have been special. I took dancing lessons. Did you go to Arthur Murray or some other well, somebody they, else? I was at Eurovan, and uh, they sent uh, an Arthur Murray group to Eurovan to teach dancing, so I didn't learn how to dance. They sent an Arthur Murray group to Eurovan to teach dancing. Yes. Eurovan must have been quite a place at one time. Well, it wasn't large. It was about, uh, oh, five, six hundred 600 people there, yeah. uh, scattered throughout the hills and mines wow. and, and Eurovan. And Eurovan had an old country store there. And uh, otherwise, you had a main street that was graveled and... You might any day or wake up and see a deer walking down the street. <laughs> so, um, for the purpose of the interview, I, uh, in addition to the AEC facility, uh, Eurovan originally was a vanadium mine, right? Right. And then they wanted to reclaim the uranium out of the vanadium tailings, right? Yes, that's right. And that's how they got uh, the link between uh, the Eurovan place and the AEC, I think. That's right. probably why they put it up here, because of all yeah. those mines here in Colorado. Well, it's interesting. <clears throat> so many people think uh, uranium is the explosive, explosive for the atom bomb, and it's not. Uh, uranium happened to be in the uh, Yervan mineral belt and was picked up when they precipitated uh, a yellow cake or uranium and polonium went along with it. Wow! About seven tenths of one percent. Wow! How long were you? Uh, how long were you there in, in Eurovan before you went to the AEC? Well, I never was with AEC because I was with uh, Union Carbide oh, okay. for forty years. Okay. And uh, Union Carbide kept changing their name from <laughs> uh, U.S. Vanadium to Union Carbide Nuclear to right on up the line to five different names. Wow. Uh, so Union Carbide was like a contractor for the government then sort of thing, huh? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. And they're under contract now with Dow Chemical. <laughs> yeah, they're still going, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you told me that you didn't really know that you were working for the Manhattan Project at the time. Well, I knew I was in a Manhattan Project. Oh, okay. But they didn't tell me why. They didn't tell you why. Um, boy, um, did you know about the possibility of developing an atomic bomb at that time? No, I didn't. No. So you wouldn't have been worried about, you know, Hitler developing a bomb or anything <laughs> like that because you didn't even know you were contributing to developing a bomb also, did you? No. Okay, boy, that's interesting. Um, once Hitler was defeated, did you think that uh, the project could deliver a bomb before the end of the war with Japan, or you just didn't know anything about all that? <clears throat> well, uh, when I really first knew about it was when they dropped the second atomic bomb on Japan. Mm -hmm. And 
Then they told me that we had been a part of it, a principal part of the bomb. How did they tell you that? Well, they just come right out and says, uh, the proj project is ending, and within a year we're going to close shop and we're going to send you to uh, Rifle, Colorado. Rifle. Had a plant there. And so I, I was transferred to Rifle right after that. Wow. Boy. Uh, how did you feel about that? Were you pretty proud of your contribution? Well, sure. Wow. And, uh, and I liked Rifle because not many people. <laughs> yeah, Rifle, uh, they had a couple of mills there, didn't they? Just one, well, they had an earlier mill which they destroyed and, and built a new one later on. So uh, once they told you and you were proud of it and everything, then the Union Carbide transferred you away from the AEC facility and sent you to Rifle to, to work, work more uranium. Well, huh? I uh, went to Rifle as assistant chief chemist to uh, Paul Crable. And uh, he was chief chemist at the time. And I worked uh, two, three years there and became chem chief chemist. Did you know uh, Mr. Schreiber there in your band? I think he was a chemist too, Schreiber? Uh, the name is familiar, but I'm kind of lost on okay. just uh, knowing him too well. Okay. Um, well, this one here is a little strange question. Um, it says, what role did patriotism and wanting to win the war for the United States play in motivating you and your colleagues? And I wonder about that because if you didn't know that, you know, you were supposed to be developing the bomb, you wouldn't even hardly realize you were a patriot, would you? No, not really. I had a job and, that, and jobs were scarce in mm. those periods and I just did what was necessary to keep my job. How did you end up uh, being a chemist instead of uh, being drafted into the army or something like that? Well, <clears throat> for some reason, uh, the army would not accept anybody that had anything to do with the atomic bomb, period. Uh, I have one interesting thing. I had one man that so obnoxious and wanted to get in the <laughs> army that they we finally let him get in the army. They trained him and shipped him to Borneo. To Borneo. <laughs> Where he couldn't see a Japanese. Oh goodness! So I never saw him again. You think maybe they did that just to keep him quiet? That's right. Just keep him away from Japanese. Wow. That well, was before the bombs were dropped. Ah. Oh. Well, you know, speaking of the bombs, you said you didn't know about the bombs till the second one uh, was dropped on uh, Nagasaki. But um, um, did you know that they were planning on invading the Japanese homeland? Yes, I knew that they had plans to uh, invade uh, Japan very soon, you know. And it's uh, interesting, uh, here in uh, Mesa View, there's a man that said, you saved my life. Mm. They dropped the, I was in, he was in, uh, ready to be invading Japan when the second bomb was dropped and it was all stopped. How do you feel about that? You feel pretty that proud of that? Nice. <laughs> wow. Um, did you ever meet General Groves? No, I didn't. I know of him, and I've got a picture of him, but I never met him. You have a picture of him? Did they uh, sign a pic? Did he sign a picture for you, or something no, like that? No, no? I, I just have one of him. <laughs> okay. How about Oppenheimer? Did you ever see? Did he ever come through? I never did t speak with him. Did he ever come over to the facility that no. you know of? No. Okay. Uh, were there other key figures of the Manhattan Project that you might have known or met? <clears throat> I can't think of any now. Okay. Well, there's only two more questions on here, and they're, uh, I think they're great questions. For The next one is, uh, how do you feel about uh, the decision to drop the bomb on Japan? I thought it was the correct one if it would stop a war, yeah. because that was a very serious war, yeah. and it was going to, a lot of people were going to be killed if they had to invade.
You know, I've heard people say it could have been another million people could have died. That's if right. They had to. By dropping the second bomb, Japan automatically surrendered and we didn't have to invade. Wow. And the last question, uh, how do you feel about your role in working for the Manhattan Project? Well, I'm very proud that I could uh, be a part of the Manhattan Project and uh, it'll always be in my memory and uh, these ladies here keep reminding me too. <laughs> And they got me all gussied up so I could uh, <laughs> see you <laughs> properly. Well, I see but, your uh, Masonic uh, pin, but I also see some atomic pins there. Uh, these pins, as you, the large ones, that is the atomic bomb pin. Wow. That was given to me for uh, being in the atomic bomb project. I'll yeah, I think that idea. bronze one is from the uh, Department of Energy, and then you got one of those silver ones. Uh, that yeah, that that's, was the original one. That's wasn't the it? original, and then they came along with a special one, which is a bronze. Yeah. And I got three of those. Wow. For some reason or other. And then you told me that your blue hat is because you've been in Masons for well over 50 about years. ten years ago. They gave me a. The Blue Hat 50-year uh, wow. award, and I've kept it, and I thought I could wear it today. 